My name is Zhao Zhengcheng, a PhD student from SMU. I will present our paper named Extracting Class Activation Maps from Knowledge Community Features as well. First is a quick preview of our paper. The task of this paper is weekly supervised semantic segmentation in which CAM plays a significant role. We work on the poor coverage of foreground objects problem in CAM. For example, the CAM only covers the discriminative regions like the head of the house. We find that the reason behind is that the classifier used to compute the CAM is biased to discriminative features only. We proposed we propose a prototype-based method to leverage both discriminative and non-discriminative features to generate class activity maps with better coverage on the complete object. Then I will introduce the detail of our paper. Uh, first is the task, weekly word semantic segmentation. Semantic segmentation takes images and pixel level labels to train our model to predict a class label for every image pixel. However, annotating pixel level labels may be very time consuming. For example, this image is hard to annotate since there are many objects and those objects overlap each other. Um, Wix's words semantic segmentation aims to lower the high cost by using weak labels instead, such as bounding boxes, screen balls, and uh, image level class labels. The last one is the most challenge setting and uh, the most popular. The core problem is how to convert class labels to masks so that we can use the masks to train the fully supervised model. This is the popular pipeline. First, we can use the class labels and images to train a classification model. Then, we use CAM to get seed masks of objects and refine it to get through masks. Finally, we take images and through masks to train the fully supervised model. Our problem is that the CAM generated by the classification model may be in low quality. Here, I will introduce CAM first. It is a simple technique to get the image regions used by CNN to identify a specific class in the image. It is computed by multiplying the classifier weights and image features, so it can be seen as the weighted average of feature maps. For example, we can use the classifier weights of a training terrier and the feature map to get which part of the image is used to recognize a training terrier. In this way, we can get the rough masks of objects. However, we find that the classifier is biased to the discriminative features. As shown in the figure, the first column is the input image, the second is the cam, and the following three columns are CAM of confusing classes, which means I use the classifier weights of those confusing classes to, to compute CAM. We find that the CAM in the ground truth class and the confusing classes are complementary. Um, for example, the front and upper regions respectively activated in the camps of car and train are missing in the cam of bus, which means the classifier deactivates those regions for bus, as it is likely to recognize them as a car or train. Then the question is how to derive a non-biased classifier that produces cam with better coverage on the object. To let the model pay attention to non discriminative features as well, we propose to derive a prototype based classifier by clustering all local features into key local prototypes, each representing a local semantic of the class. Here we collected local features across all spatial locations on the feature map blocks of all training samples in the class. Then we cluster those local features. Uh, into different clusters and uh, select several prototypes. Finally, we slide each of prototypes over the feature map blocks. Each prototype can highlight the corresponding local region, and then we aggregate the similarity maps produced by different prototypes to get the LPCAM. 
We justify the effectiveness of LPCAM from two perspectives, clustering and normalizing. From clustering, as shown in figure A, X1 and X2 go to different clusters. This is determined by their dominant feature dimensions. For example, the first dimension of FX1 is higher, and so as the second dimension of FX2. Thus, the feature computed by global average pooling may be dominated by one dimension, but our clustering based method can preserve all features. From the perspective of normalization, due to the biased classifier weights, the CAM values may be like this X1 is 130, X2 is 35, and X3 is 2. It is biased to X1. After normalization, there is no change to this bias. It will result in a large gap between X1 and X2. In our prototype based uh, method, the prototype head has the highest uh, similarity to region X1, and the prototype uh, uh, tail has the highest uh, similarity to X2. After the normalization, they become 1 and 0 0.83. Um, there is only a small gap between discriminative region X1 and non discriminative region X2. Let's see the uh, quantity results of mask quality. When we compare the quality of seed mask and uh, pseudo mask, we can see that LPCAM shows consistent improvements on both data set and multiple methods. We compare LPCAM with the state without methods. Uh, as shown in the table on the common setting, our AMN plus LPCAM achieves the state with the ultimate result on VOC. When further use CC maps, we plug our LPCAM to EDAM. It also outperforms the SOTA. On the more challenging MS Coco dataset, our AMN plus LPCAM outperforms the state with the art AMA. The qualitative result shows four examples, including one failure cases. For example, uh, the teddy bear and the dog, our, our LPCAM can activate more non-discriminative features, uh, non-discriminative regions like the body. For the example of surfboard, our LPCAM successfully removed the false positive uh, water. For the failure cases, due to the co occurrence of a train and real road, our LPCAM mystically treats the real way as the train. Uh, thanks for listening. For more details, please refer to our main paper.